President Trump decides to deal with coronavirus by declaring a state of emergency. This is a good thing. Uh, the Democrats have a primary on Tuesday. And uh, let's talk about the Democratic debate and what was good about it, what was bad about it, and about some of the ideas, too. This is Gene. You're listening to Dumbasses Talking Politics. <laughs> Oh, man, COVID-19, Wuhan flu, Chinese flu, whatever it's you decide to call, it's all over the news. It will not stop. On Friday, present, the stock market is going absolutely crazy. Uh, it, it'll go up 1,000 points one day, down 2,000, up 2,000, down 3,000 it went on Monday. Uh, everything is just absolutely going crazy. On Friday, President Trump announced that he was going to be placing uh, the country in a state of emergency that will give the federal government some power. They'll be able to do things. Uh, he'll be able to change some laws. Uh, of course, the media is flipping out a little bit. They're saying that, OK, here it is. The dictator Donald Trump is coming. But uh, I'm pretty sure after this whole thing is finished, Donald Trump will give up his uh, give up his president, uh, give up the power, call the state of emergency and everything will be good. He's already talked that he wants housing and human services to health and human services, excuse me, to deal more directly, find problems with regulations and try to break up some of the regulations so that we can treat this virus, uh, learn a little bit more about this virus quickly. I thought it was a really good deal. Um, eight, I believe it's $8 billion has been passed by the uh, Congress. It's going into the Senate. It still hasn't passed. So uh, we're just waiting for some of the Republicans want to see what Nancy Pelosi, slick Nancy did on that bill. Uh, of course, a lot of worries that Nancy Pelosi is going to try and make some of these emergency contingencies into something permanent, uh, which is which would be a really bad thing. Uh, but we'll, we'll see what's going on. I haven't really seen the bill, but I have heard there are some things in it that might be kind of iffy. So it's not a huge shock that it hasn't passed the Senate yet, even though uh, Mick Mulvaney, the um, uh, finance secretary, uh, and Donald Trump and Mitch McConnell, they all basically work together to try and get this thing pushed. So a lot of the Republicans, it seems like it is bipartisan. Uh, things are still going. Um, New York is actually creating a, I may have mentioned this before, New York is actually creating a quarantine center about a mile wide. Uh, people are panicking. So we really don't know too much about the virus. The stock market is panicking left and right. It's almost down to where it was uh, when Obama left office. That's how bad it's fallen. So it's dropped about, oh, I want to say eight, nine, eight thousand points, seven, eight thousand points. So it's it's dropped quite a bit. Today it went up a little bit. On uh, uh, Monday it actually dropped three thousand points. All from absolute panic over this coronavirus. Uh, I am actually working from home now. I They thought it was a good idea to go with a skeleton crew at work, and I'm working from home. My girlfriend is uh, working still, but they almost told her not to come to work. So things are moving along very slowly. Personally, I'm sick and tired of talking about it. I'm sick and tired of hearing about it. I'm sick and tired of everything about COVID virus. I just wish it would go away. So I tried to find some other news, and I think I did. Um, again, today we've got uh, four, I think it's three states that are, uh, three states that are doing their elections, Illinois, Arizona, and Florida. Uh, so far, Biden has basically, by a landslide, uh, won Florida and Illinois. He's expected to take Arizona also, but we're not really sure. Uh, again, in Florida, it's 78% in. That makes sense. Illinois is only 2% in, but so far he's up by 40 points in both uh, 
elections. So it looks like, I don't know what Bernie Sanders is actually trying to do. Well, I kind of do. So they did have a debate on Sunday, and I did get to watch the debate on Monday. That's why I didn't do the podcast on Monday. So let's talk about some of these some of these these two clowns because they really are clowns and let's talk about how they actually did in the debate. So the debate was moderated by CNN and Univision which I knew that was going to be awesome. So these guys were never going to be asked questions or they were never going to be asked follow-up questions and they weren't um but we'll get to that. We'll talk about the moderators later. The first thing they talk about, of course, was um, the coronavirus. And both were meant to describe how they would handle it. Uh, Biden, of course, says that Trump is a complete moron and incompetent, blah, blah, blah. And he then lists the things he would do, which is exactly what the president is currently doing. So I'm not really sure what he was talking about. And the only thing he wouldn't have done is actually close the borders, which is exactly what the president needed to do. It's the only thing he did right at the beginning of this problem. Bernie, again, same thing. Comrade Bernie is saying that the president is incompetent and um, he has bad people around him, even though every person around him is a doctor. The only person who is not a doctor is Mike Pence. And the reason Mike Pence is running it is because the president doesn't want to sit back and have to have these meetings every day. So he wants Mike Pence to run it. Pence will then report to Trump and then Trump reports to everybody else. So again, it's garbage. And then he's bit, of course, he goes off into his Medicare for all that this is a reason we need to have a single-payer health care system. Well, here's the whole thing. Medicare for all, which is what Bernie wants, has nothing to do with this virus. Medicare for all would not have made anything happen better. As a matter of fact, Medicare for all is, uh, is just rations medical uh, medical services. Let, look at what it did with the VA. Not to mention, if you look about the healthcare system, Medicare for all, we just have to take a look at Italy. Italy was an absolute disaster. That is Medicare for all. That is a single payer system. And now everybody is is dying over in uh, over in Italy. So I, I Bernie is just being Bernie. Biden actually hit Bernie on that point. He sat back and said, a single payer system doesn't work. And this is what I liked about Biden. A single payer system doesn't work. It's going to cost trillions of dollars. And he pointed out it's happening in Italy. And Italy has single payer. They've got coronavirus everywhere. A country that is maybe what? Maybe a third of the size of the United States? Maybe less? Quarter? is suffering more from the the, uh, Wuhan virus than the United States is. So, yeah, Bernie's argument is just, I got to tell you, it's just tired. It's and it's wrong. Bernie asks, only asks questions. He never has answers. I mean, even at this point, Biden is saying, um, how are you going to how are you going to pay for any of this? And again, Bernie doesn't have any answers. He actually asks more answers and plays on emotions. He, this is why he is losing. It's not only because he's an old, decrepit communist that looks absolutely insane. It's because he's just he has a lot of... He wants a revolution. A lot of cunt people don't want revolutions. And we'll get into that later. But the one thing that these two had in common, neither of them wanted to close the borders. Neither of them wanted to close the borders. They wanted still communicate, they still travel between China, Europe, Mexico, everywhere else. And as a matter of fact, Joe Biden, which is, he's an idiot anyway, but Joe Biden said, called Trump a xenophobe. Now, uh, Bernie didn't that I remember. But the reality is, Bernie has called Trumped every word under the book. 
So that is the one thing they both disagree with and don't think Trump's not going to hit that. All the mistakes that Trump made with this coronavirus thing, uh, the one thing he did well was actually close the borders. So then these guys go into, after about, oh, I don't know, it's about 15 minutes, 20 minutes of the uh, Wuhan virus, they go into um, a fights about health care and Social Security. Bernie gave Biden garbage about cutting Social Security to maintain the budget, but only wants, but only points out that he wants to, con- but points out that the reason he needed a Social Security cut is because the budget was going out of control and they couldn't actually control the bu- budget. Uh, they could not control the budget without cutting something. So Bernie said, no, everything's got to go up. We actually need to give more and more and more. So this is what Biden pointed out, is that you can't do that. You've got to have money some come in from someplace. So if you're going to give more from one thing, you've got to take away from another. And that was one of the arguments was. And one of the things I do want to point out, and because Bernie was actually slamming uh Sleepy Creepy Joe, the entire debate about his past record is that Sleepy Creepy Joe has a record. Bernie does not. He's done nothing in the Senate, and that is Bernie. In 30 years, he does not have his name on one bill. Yet he sits back and complains about what Biden has done. And this is where Biden really needs to to just slam him and say, listen, Bernie, you, you've done nothing in 30 years. You don't have your name to one bill. And that brings us to the second point. Why doesn't anybody, Biden or anyone, because it's been done a couple of times, sit back and say, Bernie, your policies, your ideas suck. They're going to destroy the country. They don't work. They don't work in any part of the world. And, and any idiot in the world knows that that socialism is not in Norway, it's not in Sweden, it's not in Switzerland. Those are not socialist nations. I just, just Biden, these guys are so busy kind of tippy toeing around each other instead of just beating the garbage out, out of each other, which is what should happen. Now, Biden did have a plan, though. One of the things he wanted to do is he's going to win the he's going to win the delegation, the delegates. It's it's done today. He's destroying Bernie. He's up 20 points. He's going to end up with easily uh, another two, three hundred delegates today. So that's not going to be an issue. But one of the things uh, Biden has to worry about is actually getting Bernie supporters to join him. Do I think that's going to happen? No. But he really tried to say, we need to come together. We need to, uh, we need to come together and we need to support each other. The nominee needs to be supported. But Bernie kept undermining Biden. Now, I don't think Biden needs to worry too much. Well, he should worry a little bit, but too much about Bernie supporters for two reasons. One, Bernie supporters are young and they typically don't vote. And two, they are not voting for Biden. They are not going to vote vote for Sleepy Creepy Joe. Not going to happen. It doesn't matter what the delegate count is. Bernie could get blown out of the water and the Bernie bros are not going to support Trump. They're going to blame everything. Um, they're going to blame everybody everybody except Bernie and they're just going to refuse to vote, throw fits, start screaming and stuff at the sky when Trump wins again in November. The one thing I do want to point out in the first hour, and this was the first hour, Bernie looked kind of flustered. He kept looking down. He had problems answering questions. And I think the problem he had answering questions is everything, every one of his answers was the same. It really was the same. It was it was the billionaires. It's our bad health care system. It's this terrible president. No solutions, mind you. As a matter of fact, when Biden ever asked him a question, give me a solution. 
he would just answer his question with a question, which is an absolutely terrible way to do this. Okay, so that was the first hour. So the second hour started with, uh, of course, identity politics. Got to have some of that. And the feminist portion. Okay, we got to talk about fe feminism. Um, this is the part where they ask how they can approve, prove the lives of women considering all of the things women have to go through. They, they've got sexism at the workplace. There's the glass ceiling. There's the garbage about being paid 15 cents on the dollar and all that garbage. Okay, by the way, Thomas Sowell disproved the economist, uh, mind you, a black male economist, disproved all that crap in the 80s. Women are not earning 70 cents to the dollar or 60 cents to the dollar. As a matter of fact, white women are earning more than white men. As a matter of fact, black women are earning more than white women. The only thing that is true is that black men are actually earning less. So it is actually black men that are having the problem, not white women. That's crap. And, and I'm going to, well, I'm going to go off on a little bit of a tangent because I'm a little bit early, but you know, here's the reality. Men die sooner. Men take more, more dangerous jobs. Men work longer hours. They work, um, uh, they work longer hours. They, uh, are expected to work. They don't get time off because they have got babies. They're having babies. Women, do the teaching thing, whereas men will do, uh, you can't even say men, they're more male doctors anymore. You can't say that. Women are in school longer. Most of the master's degrees are women. Most of the bachelor's degrees are women. So to sit back and say that all oh, poor women, men commit are higher uh, suicide rates. Men experience depression more. We have health problems, more health problems than women do. I don't want to hear this crap and right off the bat, I was already turned off with this part. I, I just stopped listening to it. I, I already know everything that CNN and um, CNN is talking about is crap. So I was just like, I don't really care. Um, but I won't lie. It is fun to watch the panda bears come out. Panda bears. Uh, Biden said he would appoint a female VP and he committed to it 100%. So yay, he is officially appointing a woman. This is the problem with identity politics. And I don't understand why people don't say this more often. And it's because politicians are idiots and they just, they don't know how to speak. Is, no, I'm going to appoint the best candidate for vice president. That does not mean it has to be a woman. It's the best candidate. Of course, I've got about 15 bucks that says it's going to be Hillary. Right, so you're gonna have 78 year old uh, Joe sleepy sleepy creepy Joe and 76 year old Hillary Clinton. So that will that will uh, be be awesome. Biden was attacked about the Hyde Amendment, and Bernie right there just lied about it. Uh, according to Bernie, the Hyde Amendment is is a protection of women's rights, and and uh, uh, Biden voted for it. Well, here's the kicker. The Hyde Amendment is not protecting abortion rights. What it was doing is it was stating that the U.S. government had to, through Medi-Cal, Medicare, had to pay for abortions. The Hyde Amendment blocked that, that uh, government funds should not be financing abortion. And Biden correctly pointed out that that Hyde Amendment was actually part of a bigger bill. So even though that was in there and maybe he was for it or not for it, and actually I think he was for it back then, but it's the fact that we could get far more things passed if we just passed that Hyde Amendment, and that's pretty much what happened. Now, when uh, Sanders was asked if he was going to um, pick a woman to be vice president, no, he said, well, I, I'll see what I can do. We'll see. I don't know. So, in other words, this is the good thing about Bernie Sanders, and probably the only good thing about Bernie, he doesn't lie. He doesn't lie to pander, whereas Biden does. And, and, and by the way, that's, that's a big problem with Biden. And Biden's going to have a lot of problems when he goes up against Trump. He really is going to have problems because he is all over the map. At least Bernie, you know where he is. And that's, he would have gotten swept all over the rug by Trump too. 
But at least you know what he, where he is, what he is, and you, you know what he's saying is true. He is honest. That is the one thing. I, I, I guess Jack the Ripper was honest too, but I, it's, that's the one thing about him. So immigration was the next subject, and of course, you know where this is going to come from. Um, the Univision reporter, who speaks in such a thick accent, I can't believe she's on, really pushed this one. Both committed to no, deport, no deportations. Uh, the only one who wouldn't, uh, the only difference is that Biden committed to actually send felons outside of the country. Okay, that's better. Bernie wants all illegals to be made into uh, made legal and become citizens. Bernie said that illegal immigration is like slavery. Biden jumped on him on that, which was a great move and why Bernie is not doing well with the African American community, saying you got to be kidding me. These people are coming over here and, uh, voluntarily. How are they slaves? How is this slavery? Uh, of course, then, you know, they go back and forth. Bernie is basically saying, well, because they make less than minimum wage and all this garbage. Um, here's the thing. Biden actually did sound like the moderate in this debate. But then they got into the subject of the immigration or ICE. And both of them said that I should not be able to arrest illegal aliens. Uh, there is absolutely no possible way either of them could be considered moderate if they just don't believe that there's any reason ever to arrest an illegal alien or anyone who's doing anything illegal. And see, that was the other thing I, I was really disappointed with. And by the way, they they go into um, they go into climate crisis next, but I'm I'm going to hold off on on that for a second. This is something that I really can't wait until Trump actually debates Biden. And I'm going to assume Bernie's done. I don't I. I believe Bernie's in this race for one reason, and it didn't happen in this debate. So Bernie really took it in the chin in this debate. But they never talked about crime reform. For example, they never talked about felons being allowed to vote, people in prison being allowed to vote. They never talked about no cash bail. They never talked about things that were just really out there that both Biden and Bernie have supported. And this is the problem. This crap is going to come up in a real debate. It's going to come up. And if the moderators for CNN or MSNBC or whoever decide not to ask, Trump will bring it up. But that's stuff they should have asked. Here's the problem the Democrats are having, and this is where their moderation goes straight out the window. Is First off, they're not moderate. Second off, crime is should not be illegal. And that's what it's coming down to. There should be no consequences for crime. And this is something I really wanted to hear, and they never talked about it in the two hours. They were too busy with illegal immigration, and identity politics, and the mm -hmm. stupid health care for all. All that crap. So finally, they came on to climate, uh, mm -hmm. climate change, which... Um, it's not really climate change. It's a climate crisis is what Bernie was calling it. And uh, again, this is this, this is the same thing, right? Uh, Bernie is beating the same drum with climate change. He wants to end our energy independence. He wants a ban on all fracking, all oil and coal production. He wants us to get um, our power from wind and solar, not nuclear, mind you, which is which is actually clean, cleaner than natural gas, which is gotten through fracking. Um, but the reality is, Bernie wants to destroy the system. Bernie still blaming billionaires. That's why it's it's we're in a climate crisis. Of course, he doesn't talk about he doesn't talk about. Um, China, and we've actually gone down in our carbon emissions, whereas China, India, uh, certain parts of Africa, it's actually gone up. Why that, that's always brought up, why we got to destroy capitalism because of the climate when socialist countries that Bernie 
seems to love are just raising the um, carbon emissions. And of course, mm-hmm. Bernie doesn't bring any of that up. Um, I, I'm sorry, Biden doesn't bring anything, uh, any of that up. The uh, moderators never pushed. They just heard his crap and that was it. So here's the problem is that Biden was supposed to be kind of a moderate on this position and he wasn't. Bernie beats him up. And any time Bernie has a stand that pushes Biden or that Biden doesn't feel comfortable answering because he knows it might make uh, um, the left angry, which is he does need some of the left, not just the moderates. He sits back and says the same thing. So he sat back. No, he doesn't want any drilling. He wants does not want any energy tax subsidies. He doesn't want any offshore drilling. He doesn't want any fracking. This was an amazing thing. This is going to kill Biden. And I don't understand. It just, ugh. So it's, uh, Bernie lured Biden in and Biden took the bait. Biden took the bait, mm-hmm. hook, line, and sinker. So the next part is um, uh, foreign policy. And this is one, I, I just don't understand how Bernie can be so freaking hard-headed on this subject. So Bernie was asked about his butt love for Cuba. And then he got into, somehow, I don't know what this, how Trump and Putin got involved, which doesn't make sense. Russia is still a communist country. It's a dictatorship, but how he hates Putin when he used to love Russia. He got into it with Putin, with about Putin and Trump, and he never answered the question. So the gal, the moderator, asked again. And Bernie still got away from Cuba and his comments on Cuba, but then talked about, hey, some communist countries do good things. Look at China and how they lowered the poverty. Oh, my Lord. He is, this is, this is where he's going to get killed. He will get killed, and he's going to lose his ass in Florida. He's losing his ass in Florida today. He's down by 40 points. So Bernie is just a, a complete moron. Um, Biden hits Bernie hard on praising the Sandinistas, Cuba, the USSR, and China. That was a good move because this makes Bernie look too far left. Not even that you know, Biden is left. But it makes him look better. Biden, uh, Bernie tries to reverse it by getting Biden to acknowledge the, the good of China. And Biden did not bite. This was his strongest showing. And this was at the end of the debate. So it was a very good move. Biden said, you've got to be kidding me. I don't care if there was good. That you, because something good over there does not mean you acknowledge the entire society. They've done so much worse. Then Bernie decides to go right off the bat and sit there and say that, oh, hey, well, what about uh, um, what about uh, Cuba Uh, or what about uh, Obama and Cuba? And then Biden sits back again. He doesn't go into it. He sits back and started attacking, uh, started telling uh, Bernie that Cuba was showing moderation, but it was not because of what their past was. He saw a moderation in Cuba. He was wrong. Obama was an idiot. But that's what he was looking at. At this point, Bernie is getting killed. He knows it. So he starts running in on running at Biden for voting for the Iraq war. Biden, again, instead of saying, yes, I voted for the Iraq war. It looked like there was a problem. We just had 9-11. He doesn't sit back and just explain. Yeah, I did vote for the Iraq war. So what? He just starts making up excuses like he's trying to make up excuses borderline on apologizing for voting for the Iraq war. This doesn't look good on Biden because it doesn't make him look like a leader. It doesn't make him look like, hey, you know what? Sometimes you have to make decisions. But um, one of the things Bernie then goes on about are the evils of countries like the United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia. He doesn't talk about Israel, which I was kind of surprised about. I thought he would actually talk about Israel, but he didn't. So that was kind of interesting. 
and he talks about how there's a war between in Yemen uh, because of Saudi Arabia. You know, this is the thing that really kicks me. He refuses to talk about North Korea, Russia, Cuba, Iran, Venezuela, or China. Everything is the fault of the United States and their allies. For example, the, the war in Saudi Arabia is a proxy war with who? Iran. The U war with UAE is a war through who? It's a proxy war with Iran. The Palestinians are, be, are controlled by who? Hezbollah. And who controls Hezbollah? Iran. He doesn't blame Iran once. He just blames the allies of the United States or the United States indirectly. It's going to be kind of a tough sell. Uh, it's, it's a tough sell for Bernie. And this is not going to get him a lot of love from people. So uh, I'm already past 30 minutes. So let's get let's get to the um, let's get to the point. Um, it was a pretty weak debate. Uh, it was boring. There was little fire from either candidate. Uh, they sparred with each other, but it was like watching two 78 year old men fighting. It was throwing their lattes at each other, whatever 78 year old man, uh, men drink. I don't know. The moderators from CNN and Universidad Uni, Univision were absolutely terrible. They never did any follow-up questions. There was never any pushing back and all the questions were leading. For example, if you want to make it so that Trump is a bad man. So if tr how, tell me, Mr. Biden, how bad is Mr. Trump, President Trump? It, that's the kind of questioning they had. So it was just crap questions. An example of that. Well, you know, with women earning 70 cents on the dollar, you know, no one, I don't believe that. So already your argument is, is your question is stupid. I don't even believe your your question. Um, in a big example, how will you stop the deportation of illegal immigrants? You know, the bigger question is, you know, what do you think about the deportation of illegal immigrants? That would have been a question. But here, it shows the bias of the supposedly unbiased media and moderators. Again, this is CNN and Univision. I guarantee you if this was run on Fox, and it has been before, Bernie's been on Fox a few times, and it would the questions would be very different. Uh, two, it doesn't allow a path outside of their bias. In other words, what we are saying is true, and that's it. And so someone like me who doesn't believe in what they're saying, I'm just not going to enjoy it. Uh, CNN is not going to get embraced for this. The, uh, the ratings are going to be at absolutely zero. Comrade Bernie lost this debate and he lost it by a lot. This was not even close. That's a surprise to me because seeing Sleepy Creepy Joe mental Joe's mental capacity. I thought Biden was Biden could be trapped, confused, and then he'd just start gaffing left and right. The beauty is he never gaffed. He actually never gaffed. He actually looked like he had his, his brains in there. He had some marbles running around in there. So he did very well. I think um, the other thing is Comrade Bernie's message is really stale. It's really boring. It's getting annoying. And he keeps throwing a message of income inequality in areas it doesn't belong. And he forces it down our throats. And the reality is a lot of people don't want a revolution. They really don't want a revolution. This is a turnoff. We don't see the United States. He sees the United States as bad and that the United States needs a revolution. A lot of people don't think that. The United States is pretty good. We may have some flaws. Let's fix the flaws. He wants to overturn absolutely everything. He never answered any questions. Whenever he was asked a question about one of his policies or one of his ideas, he just threw a question right back at him or went off on a tangent, a word salad, where you never really knew if he had answered the question or not. The other problem Bernie really is going to have, especially with moderates and independents, is his love for totalitarian governments. Um, I don't know what is wrong in that head of his. It's not, and he's been like this for, he's been like this since his 20s. 
It's not like his love for Russia or the USSR, Cuba, China, and Venezuela are new. I mean, are, are, are old hat or he's changed. I mean, he has praised both China and Cuba within the last year. About a year and a half ago, he was praising Venezuela. This is not playing well in the United States. And it's not working. Finally, Bernie doesn't have a platform. He doesn't. Revolution is not a platform. Change is not a platform. And he can't say what his change is. He can't mention anything except to get rid of capitalism. And he doesn't know how to do that. And his platform, such as Medicare for All or a single-payer system, is so absolutely insane. It's unachievable. His paying, uh, eliminating all student debt is impossible. It's not going to happen. And he doesn't, he can't even explain how it's going to happen. So Bernie's got some problems there. And he's going to lose delegates, more and more delegates as it goes. So he's going to get killed at the end. Sleepy, creepy Joe did win the debate. And why did he win the debate? Not his message. He really didn't have a message. He was also, it was a weak debate for him. He didn't explain a lot, but he does look more moderate than Bernie, which doesn't mean anything. He is more moderate than Bernie. But some of the things he brought up, some of the things he brought up, like uh, never deporting illegal aliens, except they're felons, eliminating ICE, uh, things like that um, are, are not devoted. I'm going to have a female vice president. These are not selling points. These He's not moderate. And he doesn't have the balls to sit back and say, okay, yeah, I did vote for this. I did vote for the Hyde Amendment. I think I don't think half the country who doesn't believe in abortion should have to pay for abortions. It, it makes sense. The Hyde Amendment makes sense. I don't understand why there's this need to eliminate the Hyde Amendment. It does not cost a lot to have an abortion. Go have the abortion. You want to have an abortion, you pay for it. Um, he didn't gaff. That's what saved him. Not only did he look more moderate than Bernie, which doesn't mean anything, but he didn't make mistakes. He didn't stutter along. He didn't blah, 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 any of that crap. But here's the problem. Here's the problem. There's going to be no unification of the party. Uh, there's no way Biden is getting Bernie, the Bernie bros. They're going to feel rejected. They're going to um, uh, uh, get angry. They're going to protest. They're going to throw an, I can't wait to see the Democratic uh, convention. I think that's going to be absolutely hysterical. But here's the problem. This is the problem that Biden is going to have throughout this election cycle. Mm -hmm. One, he has no, he has no energy. He is just absolutely no energy. He doesn't even look like he wants to be the president of the United States. And two, well, let's just listen to this. It's going to be a little longer, but this is going to be a big thing. And don't think Trump is going to be as nice as Bernie, as nice as Bernie, and not bring this up. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Take your AR, your AR-14s and women. Okay, this is not okay. Hold on, hold on. All right. Hey, let's you want to talk about this? There's a lot of guys. There's a lot of guys. Wanted. Well, targeting over this exchange this morning with the voter about guns. Any press about how you handle it? Well, I'm surprised that uh, Sanders is joining Trump. You know, I, I, it just surprised me. Wasn't it probably to swear at an American, though, especially a union voter? Look, tomorrow is Superstar Tuesday, and I want to thank you all. I tell you what, I'm rushing ahead, aren't I? 150 million people have been killed since 2007 when Bernie voted to exempt the gun manufacturers from liability. It would put 720 million back, million women back in the workforce. Nobody should be in jail for a nonviolent crime. My name's Joe Biden. I'm a Democratic candidate for the United States Senate. What's not to like about Vermont in terms of the beauty of it? And what a neat town. Play the radio. Make sure the television, the, excuse me, make sure you have the record player on at night. Poor kids are just as bright and just as talented as white kids. We choose science over fiction. We choose truth over facts. 
Think about it. We hold these truths to be self-evident. All men and women created by the go, you know the you know the thing. He's not proudest of is getting passed, getting moved, get, getting control of the Paris Climate Accord. I'm the guy that came back after meeting with Deng Xiaoping and making the case that I believe China would join if we put pressure on them. You had people like Margaret Thatcher, oh, excuse me, you had people like the, the former chairman and leader of the party in, the, in Germany. Go to Joe 3033. I got hairy legs that turn, that, 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 that turn uh, um, blonde in the sun. And the kids used to come up and reach in the pool and rub my leg down so it was straight and then watch the hair come back up again. They'd look at it. So I learned about roaches. I learned about kids jumping on my lap. And I've loved kids jumping on my lap. It's a good question. Number one, I was a Democratic caucus. You ever been to a caucus? No, you haven't. You're a lying dog faced pony soldier. You said you were, but you're, you're, now you got to be honest. I'm going to be honest with you. There's your Democrat leader. That's going to be your nominee. That's going to be your Democratic nominee to be president. He is getting worse and worse and worse. And all of that was in the last three years. The actual uh, quote with this, the hair on his legs. I had to put that one in there. That happened in 2017. But everything else was within the last six or seven months. He is losing it. He is getting worse. Don't think for a second that Trump isn't going to beat on that drum. Don't think Trump isn't going to confuse him. Trump speaks fast. Trump is hits hard. Trump is going to corner him. Trump is going to confuse him in debates. And the best thing that Bernie, that uh, Joe Biden can do to win against Trump is hope Trump implodes and not do any debates with Trump, which is not going to work out. Okay, I'm way over now. So you can follow me on Twitter at RunninFool, R-U-N-N-I-N-F-E-W-L. You can download or listen to his podcasts on Apple Podcast, Podbean, Podcast Addict, and YouTube. Uh, please visit my website uh, for any show notes, full videos, graphics, um, and links at www.dumbassestalkingpolitics.com. I actually don't have any uh, show notes for this episode. I just kind of went up, went on my own. Um, please comment, subscribe, like. This is Gene, and you've listened to Dumbasses Talking Politics. Mm-hmm.